the URL for the University of Benin is cdllms.uniben.edu cdllms.uniben.edu and so once you click on that once you type on that cdllms.uniben.edu it will take you to the LMS platform of the University of Benin Center for Distance Learning and so you can see the menus here Uniben CDL FDS IAG LMS tutorial courses so we have only one course now and then you have 100 200 and 300 levels so if you click on the 100 you're going to see all the 100 level courses here if you point to this 200 these are all the 200 level courses and if you point to 300 you see all the 300 level courses so and then you can, this is the cdl portal you can also go to the CDL portal through this site you can go to the cdl web the counseling menu also here but for today um, we're going to be looking at the deployment how can we use the learning management system to deploy activities and resources for the students for the learners and of course you know they are called learners because they undergo self-paced study so they are more importantly we should call them learners and not students okay so i'm going to pick a particular course right now so what, what this means is that the course facilitators are going to be enrolled for the different courses if it's for if it's on the level they're going to be enrolled for any of these course so once you go to the site and you log in there's going to be a login details for all the facilitators and e-tutors so once you log in it's only your course that you will see it's because i'm an ad administrator that's why i'm seeing all the courses and i can go into all the courses so once you get to that site and you click your course so let me pick an under level course okay this is echo 121 it's a typical course and in this course you can see that um it has a course home button so when you click on the home it takes you back to the home page of the lms if you click on courses it shows you a lot of courses you have and this is echo 121 so this tells us that we are on the um, platform on the course page of echo 121 and the facilitator either the facilitator or the editor either of them is a course administrator because you are going to be the one administering your course page so all the deployments that we have in the courses are going to be deployed by you and there is an admission block here this is the, this is the admission block so you can, here you can edit settings you can turn editing on you can see the number of users that are enrolled on this course you can do filters you can generate report based on the activities that you have done so if you have given them a test and at the end of the session if you want to harvest all the um results of the quizzes all you need to do is just go to reports and then you generate your own activity that you have deployed if you want to generate the results you go to grade book setup to generate this so i'm going to take we're going to do it a little deployment before you go into this aspect all right so um there are contents that have been put in here so this we are done for the NUC accreditation, but we are going to start from this because this you see how this week is blank. This week is blank. This week is blank. This week is blank. So we will take on this week, which is topic seven. Now, before we can do anything, of course, you see that if you look at this interface right now, you will see that um, it it's um, it's based on weekly basis. This is study session one. The, uh, all deployments here are for one week. Session two, all deployments here are for another week. If you look at this now, you will see that you can't actually deploy anything here. But for you to be able to deploy anything at all, you have to go to the admission, admission block and click on turn editing on. Turn editing on. So this button is what will allow you to be able to deploy activity on your course page you can see that if you go to every week there is no button here no add activity or resource button here no edit button but by the time you turn editing on you're going to see the edit button that will allow you to put activities and resources on the page so i'm going to click turn editing on so editing is turned on right now all right so you can now see because i clicked on turn editing on you can see the edit button so this will allow you to put a lot of deployments to do a lot of deployments 
you can see for every week there is add activity or resource there's edit button add activity or resource topic eight you have edit, edit button for this week add activity or resource for this week topic nine you have edit button for this week add activity for so that's how they are laid, um, laid. all right so we said we are going to start from um this so for you to change this topic because if you are dealing with decent learning students you can't leave it as topic seven all right because it doesn't make any sense to them so you have to rename this topic seven and how do you do that you click on edit and then you click edit topic edit topic so when you click on edit topic it gives you a summary of topic seven now you can see this is topic seven here you'll be able to edit this until you check this custom box you'll be able to edit this until you check this custom box so when you click on custom then that will give you the flexibility of changing this topic seven to what you want so we can call this training class on zoom so that's the name we have that's what we have named you want to have something like a description you can put it here but it's not essential that you have a description and um, well if you are actually dealing with distance learning students you can do a, so a big decision of a big decision of what you have in on the training class on zoom so you can say that this um training session this training session will afford you the opportunity will afford you the opportunity of understanding the learning management system so that's a short note that i have put under the summary now if you have done that all you need to do is just click on save changes because this is the final command here save changes so when you click on save changes then it's going to save what we have deployed all right so you can now see here training class on zoom and then you can see this what i put under summary the training session will afford so for every distance learner you should carry them along you should actually spoon feed them spoon feed them in the sense that you don't have to assume so much but when they look at the um summary box where they have the description it will throw more light on what you have actually put as a title all right so um there is after that if you look up here you see that there is what's called announcement announcement so that is always at the beginning of your course page announcement all right so you need to really tell them give them information because when a child comes to class you first introduce yourself to the student uh, my name is so so and so i'm going to be taking your course uh, this semester is a two unit course i clicked on the announcement and you can see here the forum name is announcement now description here you have to put your general announcement and this is where you put the instruction you want the student to see welcome to to this class i am dr olusoji adewumi i will be your i will be your facilitator for this course this semester for this course this semester so just and then put all the instructions there just put the instructions there and don't forget to click on this box display description on course page if you don't click on this display they will not see it they will not see what you have put on the description box so once you click on display description on course page all right you can just I mean, just ignore this because it's just an announcement. Just click save and return to course. Save and return to course. So you can see announcement. You have the announcement right now. And then you have welcome to this class. So they are, this, this is instruction that you have left for them. All right. And then for every course page, we have uploaded the course module. So this is a course module. So you are going to find this. So that the student can actually download the course module and if they, if they want the soft copy they can read the soft copy they also have the hard copy that they will get from the center all right so we have also put an individual material 
So this course, Echo 121, this is the artificial material, is from the first um, topic to the last topic. And this is sort of session one. So as a facilitator, you will now start to deploy your content. So this training class on Zoom. Now, we basically we have resources and activities that we can deploy. And I'm going to show us how we can look, how we can get to that resources and activity. So there is add an activity or resource. So this is in every week. So this other activity or resource is in this week. We also have our activity or resources for this week, topic eight. This activity or resources for this week, topic nine, and this for this week, topic 10. So because we want to deploy the activity or resource into this week, this which is the training class on Zoom, you're going to click on add an activity or resource. So when you click on after add an activity or resource, you can see all the activities that you can deploy. And then you can see the resources. The resources are below. The activities are on top. Basically, we can use file resource. I'm just telling us the common ones we can use. File resource. File resource is when you want to upload um, supplementary material or keynotes for the students to download. Maybe you have just you've gone through their um, study session, and then there are key points that you need them to um, really be able to understand. You can put them in Word file, in PDF file. So you are going to go through file resource, which we are going to do right now. So other resources we are going to look at file resource. We don't need this book because there's all us. There is already the course module on the LMS. So folder we don't need to populate and begin to keep uh, files in a folder. IMS content package we don't need that. We need label. We need a label. So basically now we need a URL. URL is when you are going to use um, additional video resource. On that course, maybe it's being taught by somebody is on YouTube and you want to make it available for the student, so you can use a URL. But there are um, this label and URL they can serve the same purpose, but I prefer to use label, and I will ex explain because when you use a URL, it only gives a link. It doesn't show the video, so to say. It's only when you click it that the video shows. But for label, it gives a link. You see a link, and of course, you see this video. So once you click on the video, even the student getting to the page, they can see the video. Outrightly. So for this resource, we are going to use these two file and label. All right. So let me use the file under resource. After we have um, exhausted what we want to do on this resource, then we can now go to activity on top here. So for the resource, file is a resource. So when you click on file, you click on add. All right. So I've clicked on this add. And a form, form like structure is going to be given to me. So, this is name. It allows you to name it. Now, because these are asterisk in red, it means a composite field. You have to fill it. So, name, I could just say short notes. I call it short notes. Short notes on study session one. Short notes on study session one. Then, description. You might need to really explain some things about the short notes. Um, please endeavor to endeavor to go through to go through this short note as it will as it will break down complex. sections in the module in the, in the study session one in the study session one in the study session one all right and of course we will not forget to click on display description on course page because if you don't click on this display description on course page you will not see this so as i have clicked it right now i will be able to see this all right, and so the next thing is for us to now drag that file into this box. All right, so you can minimize, you know where the file is, you can just drag the file into this box. But if you're using phone or a tablet, that don't have that flexibility of dragging, you might want to click on this plus sign. So you go through the route of choosing your file. So this is choose a file, under upload a file, you choose, you choose, choose a file and then you look for a particular file you want to bring in okay let's say let me look for the file that i want to bring in okay there is um 
let me bring this second class infographics let me just bring that file it's a powerpoint file so you can see that this file has been moved in here and then click on upload this file this is a final instruction so when you click on upload this file it's going to move that file it's going to upload it into the file picker can you now see so this is second class infographics so the file is a powerpoint so the basic files that you can move in a powerpoint file word file or pdf file all right so next you go to appearance how do you want the file to appear display automatic so by default you see automatic and leave this automatic it means that once then sees it and they click on it it's going to download on their on their system show size we don't need to show the size you don't need to we don't need to show the type you want to show it just click on this but we don't need to show it you so uncheck it now display is the uh, display resource description this is um checked and then these are by default you don't need to restrict access because you want them to have access to it so that's all what you need to do the next thing is to click on save and return to course save and return to course all right so you click that so you can see so we have done the first deployment which is short notes on study session one and this is a summary please endeavor to go through this so what you saying we do once they get to this course page once they click on it this powerpoint file will download on their system or whatever device so and it's a good thing you have done this once but countless number of students can download at the same time so we have this is through a resource a resource is additional material you want to provide for the students to, to ginger their learning to really make them understand what you are teaching all right so another resource that you can add is a video for instance let's talk about um econometrics maybe you are teaching on econometrics and if you don't want to make the video you can go to youtube and pick any of the video on youtube that talks about econometrics so i've copied the url then go to add activity or resource everything you will need to we must deploy on weekly basis must go through act, add activity or resource so what we're doing right now is adding resources we've added this file resource so we now want to add a video resource so click on add activity or resource so when you click on this go down to resources and then under here you have label so you can actually drop the link on url but i prefer we use on you will use label because label will actually display that video you there's a there's going to be a thumbnail of that video on the course page which is better for you to see so you click on label after you click on label click add and right, so when you click add you can see the label text label text will be you can name it as video class on econometrics um, going forward now go to this um two toolbox there's a toolbar attached to the label text there's a toolbar so you can see from here one two three four five this 51 insert video this is insert video so when you click on it it's going to ask you to paste the source url so i'm going to go over that that's um, youtube www.youtube Econometrics. All right, so let's say this is what we want. This is what we want. All we need to do is just copy this URL. Copy this URL. And go back to the LMS. Right click and paste. So that's URL. So this URL. And then the next thing we need to do enter name so maybe a file name for this particular url let's say video class video class and then click insert media so this is you can see this is the link that we have just copied now so the next thing for us to do is just click on save and return to course save and return to course okay so perfect so you can see that from this deployment, we have had we have two deployments right now. The first one is a resource. These these two are resources actually. The first one is a short note. 
a, a PowerPoint file that tells the student that gives them um, keynotes, key points on the study session. And then the second one is a video class on econometrics. So once students see, and this is the beauty of using a label than URL. If you use a URL, you're going to see that link only. But we want students to be carried along. So once they see this thumbnail, they will know that, okay, this is a video I need to click. And once they click the video, it plays. Hi, everyone. So this is an introductory video to econometrics. All right. All right. So let, let's move forward. So you can see that these are the two basic things that we must deploy in every page, on every link, rather, on every, um, every week. We must deploy them on every week. So also going to uh, topics two, the second topic, make sure that you give them a short note, you give them a video link that will teach that concept more. And that's a function of facilitation. Give them resources that will help them to understand the concept that they're teaching. All right, so after doing this, we can now move forward to activity. So we can now move forward to activity. So click on add activity or resource. When you click on add activity or resource, you go to activity, this activity. You can see the first thing there under activity is assignment. So this is tutor marked assignment. This is an assignment given by the tutor. So the fact that they are distance learners does not mean that they cannot do a textual based assignment. So you want to give them that textual based assignment, just click on assignment and then click on add. Click on add, all right. It gives you um, this page. So this, this is assignment name. And assignment follows what's called tutor marked assignment. So you can just name it tutor marked, tutor marked assignment. Tutor marked assignment, TMA on econometrics. Tutor marked assignment on econometrics. All right, so, and then description. So this is where you now enter the question for that assignment. Um, as usual, give them instruction, please. Endeavor that you attempt this assignment. This assignment as it's going to, to carry 10 marks. carry 10 marks all right all right so this is now the assignment questions questions one what is this is an example i won't finish it what is then you can have to turn the weight of the mark there five marks so that they will know that by attempting this particular question is that's five marks of my five marks question two where is blah 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 that's also under five marks okay so so this is and of course you can use this toolbar to format this text question you want it to be bold so this question will be bolder than the others all right so this is just so it is in this description box that you put all the questions then, of course, as usual, you have to click on display description on course page. Display description on course page. So click on this display description. And you now go down to availability. This availability allows submission from. Availability talks about when is the assignment available. Is it from now, this is today is 24, 24 October, 2023. From what time? From 12 midnight, 0, 0, 0, 0, to due date, to when? If it is 30, that means it's ending at the, um, on the 30, or you can change it to 31, you can change it to 28, it depends on what you want. So you put it 28, it means that this particular assignment will open today, and it will close on the 28th of October, 2023, by, this is 23, that is 11.59. So you just scroll down, 11.59. So it's closing by a minute to 12 o'clock on the 28th. All right? Cut-off date is when you 
um, when you have to give them a, a bit of time for them to submit after the due date. So this cut off date may be 30, so that people that don't submit on the 28th can still submit two days after. So if you have to do that, you have to enable this and change this to 30 or 29. You see, they, that's a, a, a one day grace. So if you change to 29, that's a one day grace. If you change to 30, that's a two day grace. All right. So if you have to put cutoff date, it's still optional as is deemed fit by the facilitator or the tutor. Now, you can also ask the system to remind you to grade by a particular date. So if you want that reminder, of course, enable this and put the reminder. But if you don't want, but if you don't want, just disable. Just disable this. All right, so that means I don't want. Now this is also always show description is marked. All right, so now that you have set the questions and you have set the due date and the, the start date and the due date, you need to also specify what kind of submission students should do. So there are two submissions there, online text or file submission. Online text is a kind of submission whereby students will just do the assignment online. They will copy it and they will paste online. They don't have to upload anything. That's online text. And then when you click online text, you have to specify word limit here. Word limit like 200 words. In nothing more than 200 words. That means that they cannot just type more than, they can supply more than 200 words. All right, but if you're not doing online text, you can see this word limit will go off. And if it's file submission, it means you have to also specify how many number of files can they upload. This is 20. Of course, they can upload only one. This is one file. Upload only one file. The maximum, if they are uploading one file, what's the maximum size? Maximum submission size. The file should not be more than maybe like 10 megabytes because a 200 word document should not be more than even like maybe two five megabytes so this is just to limit them in case someone tries to upload more than 200 words and then of course same will not allow this because the maximum file that is expecting is something like five megabytes all right now accepted file types you may want to of course the by default the learning management system accepts pdf you know word file and some other files but if you want to have other file in mind, you can click on um, this to choose other file types, uh, archive file, audio files, audio files used on the web, document file, HTML track file, image files, image files used on the web, presentation files, streaming files. You can see numerous number of files that, types of file that you can upload. So once you check on anyone, all right, that's what the system is going to accept. But by default, it will accept Word and PDF. So I'm going to cancel this. So just leave this as it is. Now, feedback types. Are you giving to them feedback once you submit the questions and you have marked it? So these feedback comments. Um, offline grading worksheet. If you want to now grade them offline and submit that offline grading worksheet or that's a feedback file. All right. So none is selected here. And then let's go to comment line. Do you want a comment line in line whereby after you must have marked you want to put a comment that say you have not done well, you need to study more. So if, if you want that comment line, just say yes. If you don't want it, you leave it as no. The submission settings. These settings are very key. And this is where you will have to set the parameters. For instance, students require to click the submit, submit button. When Once they submit, do you want them to click a particular button, a submit button, yes or no? If you say no, it won't show, but they will see submit. So if you want yes, yes is fine because they must click that button. Once they click the yes, yes, you have submitted. So they need to confirm that they have actually submitted. Then it requires that student accept submission statement. You want them to, you want the statement to come to say that this work has been done by me, except where I have used other people's material and I have cited them. If you don't want those kind of long drama, just leave it as no. All right. Then attempt reopened. Once they submit, you want them to reopen the attempt and resubmit again. All right, never means that once they have submitted, they have submitted. But if you say manually or automatically on the pass, they can be deleting it and uploading again, deleting and uploading. But I think I've found never. Once it's submitted, that's fine. Then if you have a group, if you want them to submit as a group, you of course you have to enable this. Submit, submit, students submit in groups. 
but we are not in groups, they are just singly. What about notification? Once it's submitted, do you want them to notify the grader who is the facilitator about submission? If you say yes, then that every as at every point when a student submits, there's going to be a notification to you that somebody has submitted. So if you have like 1,000 students, you're going to get 1,000 notifications on your phone. And of course, your data will be going. So I don't think this is fine. So notify graders about this submission. What about people that want to submit after the expiration day? All right. If you say yes, it will notify that somebody wants to submit after the due date. Now, the first setting for notify to notify students. Do you want students to have a notification? Do you want them to send a notification to the student that they have submitted, which is yes. This is fine. You can leave it as yes. Now, the grade. Now, remember that we said that the assignment carries 10 marks. Now, so this is the point. And by default, you have 100. But this, this, this assignment that we have set is not 100, it's 10, carries 10 marks. So we have to delete one of the zeros and leave it as 10. The grading is simple direct grading, so leave this is by default. Grade category, uncategorized, you can leave this. Grade to pass, no, there's no rubric for grade to pass. Blind marking, so we are going to leave this, leave all this as they are. Um, restrict access, no, we are not restricting access. Let's just leave this as they are. And then just click save and return. Save and return. All right, so when you click on save and return, then you go back to, it goes back to the page. So you can see what we have done right now. We have deployed a um, PowerPoint file. We have deployed a video. And then we have also deployed a tutor marked assignment on econometrics. So on students seeing this, all they need to do is just click on tutor marked assignment. Once they click on that, you can see. They can upload their file. But because you are the facilitator, this is what you will see. Hidden from student is not hidden. Participants on this page, there are eight. Draft, nobody has actually submitted anything. Submission, nobody has submitted. Needs grading. Number of submission will determine the number of people that needs grading. Due date is Saturday, 28th of October. And time remaining, you have, we have four days, 10 hours to due date. So as a facilitator, if you want to mark a tutor mark assignment, all you need to do is just click on view all submissions. View all submissions. So when you click view all submissions, you can see all the students in your class with what they have submitted. So you can see all this. You can see. So you can you may want to show only active enrollment. You may download all the submissions in folder. So when you click this, download all the submission in folders, everything will be downloaded for you. You can also filter. Let's say you want to um, mark, you have marked some students, but you are not done marking everybody. You can filter them. Those people that have submitted, those people that requires grading, you can also grant extension on that filter. Now, because probably you may have over 1,000 students in your class, the system may show you, they are going to show, they will show you 10, 10 assignments per page. That means you have to do a lot of um, next, 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 next. But here you can click on this and say you want 100 students per page, 100 submission by page or 50 submission by per page. So these are also options. All right. So... Because there's no there's not been any submission, that's why you have this. But if there are submissions, for instance, look at this now. No submissions. If there are submissions, you're going to see the file here. The file, the word file that they have uploaded will be here. So all you need to do is just click on grade. So when you click on grade, you grade that particular um, submission. All right. So you can edit. You have other um, things to really work on here so this this is an environment for the facilitator to grade those submissions now let's go back to the course page the course page is equal one or two you can say bread is a breadcrumb they call it breadcrumb breadcrumb means that you don't have to go next uh, back 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 this is back 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 you know you don't have to do that all you need to do is just go to just pinpoint where you're going echo one to one click on echo one to one and straight it goes to that page that's the next activity that i want to deploy is a discussion forum so we just go to activity so we're going to go to forum so this is discussion forum all right and you click add now discussion forum is one of the major interactivity tool on the learning management system if you have taught them in class you can actually post a question to say based on what i've taught you in class can you explain in your own words what you understand or you can say that students they post different questions. Students post a question and other students will respond. 
So this is just to ginger learning. So learn from an econometrics. Now description, as usual, you may have to put um, some instructions there. Please, and before you go through the mo your module, all right. So once you once you are, you, are, you are put the description, click on display description on course page. Display description on course page. All right. And then under forum type, we have a single simple discussion. Each person posts one discussion. So each student can post one discussion and other students can respond to it. And of course, you also have question and answer forum. So question and answer forum is being used by a tutor. Now, under forum type, like I said, we have these five types, one, two, three, four, five. Now, as a tutor, you may want to use question and answer forum, whereby you ask the questions and every other learner will respond. This is whereby each person, each, each learner posts a discussion and other learners will respond. But I prefer this question and answer forum, whereby the tutor, the facilitator asks a question and every other learner will respond. So this is just to ascertain if they've gotten the concept or not. All right, Q and A forum, question and answer forum. Now, you have to go to availability. Availability talks about when this particular um, forum is available. So you can see that these are great, which means that you can use them, except you enable that text box, except you enable. OK, so when you click enable this, then of course, that's when you can change. When you click enable this, that's when you can change this also. So due date is from today, 24th of October, and it ends on the 30th. So just change the 30. And time, that is 11.59, 11.59, all right? So that's the due date, start date and cutoff date. Attachment and word count. So would you want the students to respond by attaching files? That will not be advisable because you may want to use this as a sort of grading. Yeah, you're going to click on attachment and say uploads are not allowed so when you click on uploads are not allowed that means that they will not be able to attach they will just have to copy and paste on the forum now number of maximum number of attachment that is required of course since we are not allowing any upload then of course they would not need to attach anything so you click on this and you say zero maximum number of attachment is zero word count yes because they are going to paste on something like a blog like structure you may want to restrict them so that they just don't pop populate their response with a lot of text. So you're going to word count. Yes, there should be a word count. Okay. And then subscription and tracking. How many learners are subscribed to this? Is it optional for students to attempt? No, it's not optional. So we're going to click this and say false subscription. For that means every learner must attempt it. So it's not optional. Retracking that can be optional. So basically, discussion uh, discussion locking. We are not locking anything. Post stressful for blocking. We are leaving that. Whole forum grading here. Yeah. Grade. You have uh, is it non? Is it scale? Is it point? Let's say grade is point because you want to grade it. If that's if you want to grade this particular discussion. So what's the grade? Ten marks. Maximum grade is ten marks. Grading is simple direct grading. That's fine. Grade category on categorized, that's fine. Grade to pass, we are not setting any rubric. Notify default setting for to notify students. Yes. Once they have submitted, you want to you want to notify them that your submission has been received. All right. Ratings. Okay. Here, under rating, there's a great type of rating. So here we want this is no rating, average of rating, count of rating, maximum rating. Maximum rating is when you give them opportunity to do to maybe um to respond like three or four times and of course so it's going to give them that maximum and like minimum is also the, the smallest of the number sum of rating so just pick any and if you pick count of ratings so it's going to um afford the opportunity to just attach score to every forum all right then scale mind you we said it's 10 so we use this to 10 from 100 and that is all what we need to do. This is common mode setting, restrict access tag. So these are all, these are by default, you can leave them. And now one thing you need to do, or you need to know, is that when you are setting a discussion forum, a discussion forum is in two stages. The first stage is setting a parameter. So what we have done on this page is setting the parameter. The second stage is to now put the question. Of course, you see that you have not, we have not put any question 
on the first page, on the first stage rather, there's no question that has been set. You know, so second stage is now where we put the question. So if you do deploy a discussion forum and you don't go through this two second stage, then they will not see anything and there won't be any opportunity for them to respond to what you have put in. All right, so when you now get here, you click on save and display, not save and return. Because if you say click on save and return, it means you are done with the setting. But mind you, you have not pulled the question. So you have to click on save and display in order to pull the question. All right, so you can now see this save and display. It now is asking us to add a new question. Add a new question. So when you click on add a new question, this is subject, it's a discussion discussion on econometrics discussion on econometrics and of course this is where we now put the question so explain in your own words in your own words the term econometrics the term econometrics all right so that's it then now click on post to forum post to forum all right so when you click on post for the forum all right so this is it discussion on econometrics and it has been posted so replies here is no reply because nobody has actually attempted it and you go to your page to grade this student on discussion forum you can see this discussion forum on econometrics please endeavor to go through your module in order to respond to discussion so if you want to now grade this, you as far as facilitator, you have to click on this link. When you click on this link, it take you here. Replies is zero. So you can click on, you are going to see the total number of replies here. Now we are going to go to the last activity. So let's go back to Echo 121. Computer mag assessment. We have we have um, actually done two activities now. We have done two resources. This is file, and this is a video to engage them in studying their learning. The study notes is or it's a file resource, and this is label resource. So we have done two resources, and we also done two activities: tutor mark assignments, and then discussion forum, which is the two activities. And the last activity that we can do deploy for the student is the Computer mag assessment. Computer mag assessment. That is objective question, multiple choice questions. So there are two ways in which you can deploy a computer mag assessment. Two ways. Now, the first way is by entering those questions one at a time. I was talking about the two major aspects or two major options that you have in doing a computer mag assessment. Computer mag assessment. The first one is when you enter the questions one at a time the second option is when you populate all your questions multiple choice questions in notepad or microsoft word and then you upload them at once so you have to populate the questions maybe like 200 questions and then upload them at once that is bulk upload so there are two forms the first one is one by one so i'm going to explain how you can enter them one by one maybe you want to just give them 10 questions so I'm just going to do like two or three questions, enter them one by one. Then later I'm going to show another example of how we can end, we can do a bulk upload. So let's go now to computer mag assessment. So when you click add an activity or resource, add activity or resource, and you click on activity, this activity. So we're going to go to quiz. This is quiz. This is quiz. So when you click on quiz, click on add. Click on add. So when you click on add, you can see this is the name. You have to give it a name. That is a multiple choice question. Multiple choice question. Choice questions on econometrics. Econometrics. Okay. All right, so description. Now, just like the discussion forum, this is also in two stages. The first stage is to set the parameter. Second stage is to start I, I am entering the questions, just like discussion forum, all right. So description, just as usual, you have to give instructions. Ensure 
you attempt this this quiz as it is part of it is part of your continuous assessment then you click on display so that you can see this instruction that you have put for them now timing this quiz when does it open of course this is disabled this is disabled you can't change anything here because this is disabled so you have to enable this enable this so timing you it starts from today and then it's ending 38th of october what what time by 11 59 11 59 all right now time limit how many questions are you giving them and for how long okay so if you are giving them 30 questions you may have to set this of course enable time set time limit 20 questions 30 questions for 20 minutes 30 questions for 20 minutes so this test talks about the time limit by which they have to do the um the test all right then when time expires what happens while there are still maybe there are some, there may be some slow coaches among them or some people that are reading questions that they could not finish so when that 20 minutes expires when it elapses what should happen there are three options one open attempts are submitted automatically two there's a grace period when one attempt can be submitted but no more questions answered and three attempt must be submitted before time expires or they are not counted in fact this third one attempt must be submitted before a time expires it's a no-go area because it's a wicked um, option it means that if they don't finish and they don't submit then that everything they have done is wasted so we can't use this the second one there's a grace period when open attempts can be submitted but no more questions are um, answered this is also not fair but for this one it's a fair one open attempts are submitted automatically so whatever happens even if their system shuts down if their data got exhausted anything whatever happens whatever they have done will be submitted so this is fair all right then grade is uncategorized grade to pass we are not setting any rubric attempts allowed attempts allowed how many attempts do you are you allowing unlimited means they will keep on doing you know severally and then when they keep on doing it you only record the highest grade because it's unlimited but if you change this to one attempt you see that this will be disabled so attempt allowed is only one attempt that we want and so there's no more no other options for them to do of or, or for them to see highest grade now layout when you click on layout how do you want the questions to be displayed you are setting 30 questions you want it to be one question per page or you want 10 questions per page or you want 50 questions per page or you want 30 questions per page so it's optional but for distance learning i prefer to use to, to to use one question per page every question per page because there is a tendency for them since they are doing their tests in their homes or everywhere so if you have 30 questions per page they may have to they may screenshot that 30 questions go and find answers and then give it to the other students to go through before they attempt their own all right so you don't have to give them that flexibility of um, or that that allowance of being able to cheat on the questions all right so every question per page is fine the question behavior this is very important shuffle question must be shuffled so that question number one for one person will have to be question number 30 for another person all right so if we don't say shuffle question number one for one person will be one for everybody our question behave default feedback yeah that is fine then review options this is very important review options is very important you have one two three four we have four um kind of columns here one two three and four you can see that during the attempt these are disabled during the attempt you cannot see the attempt you cannot see whether it is correct you cannot see the marks you cannot see specific feedback you cannot see general feedback you cannot see right answer you cannot see overall feedback so likewise immediately after the attempt it's explained that you disable all this later while the quiz is still open disable them later after the quiz is closed disable them because if they can see their scores after the quiz is closed and they know someone who got 29 over 30 of course they won't be they won't want to do their own anymore you will have to ask that person who got 29 
to be doing for every other person. So my take is that you disable every of these check boxes. And if you must disable them, please don't start from the top. Ensure you start from the bottom. That's how you can get a perfect disabling. All right, so you uncheck, 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 uncheck. Perfect. All right, appearance. How do you want the quiz to show? All right, no image. This my places. We don't have uh, this. When you say um, yes, small image, large image, then it means that their it means that their picture will show. All right, but this my places in grades. We don't want this my places. So just say zero. Just say zero. We don't want decimal places. So we say zero. Whatever scores they have, it's a um, whole number. No decimal places. We don't want to put extra decision attempt. We don't want to give a for feedback. This common settings is is um, default. Restrict access. We don't want to restrict access. We don't want to do all this. So, so we are done with setting the parameters for the quiz now. All right. And then the next thing we do is to we can't click save and return because when you click save and return, it means you are done. So you have to click save and display. You have to click save and display. So when you click save and display, you cannot enter the questions. So like I said earlier, the quiz is in two stages. When you want to deploy a quiz, it's in two stages. So the first stage is to set the parameter, which we have done right now. And the second stage is to put in the question. So we're going to click save and display. Save and display. So when you click save and display, you can see this. You can see multiple choice questions on econometrics. Ensure you attempt this quiz. As part of a continuing assessment, time allowed is one. Attempt allowed is one. The quiz opened at this date and the quiz closes at this date. So they will see all this. And they will also see that the time limit is 20 minutes. And here, no question has been added. Just like I said, it's in two stages. First stage is setting parameter. Second stage is to now put the quiz. So how do you put the quiz? Click on edit quiz. So you click on edit quiz. Of course, you're going to see this interface all right so this is total max is zero for here and then there's a maximum grade of 10 this is by default number of questions you put which should be equal to the number of maximum grade if you have put 30 questions here then the maximum grade will be 30 you have to change this to 30 or else it will be fractionalized so the the, the mark you have here the mark you have here is a reflection of what you put here so if you have 30 questions here you you have to change this to 30. if you don't do that it will whatever score that is derived here will be divided by 10. so the number of quiz that you put here must be equal to the number you put here and you now click save all right so let's look at we click on shuffle and then click on add you can see when you click on add you can see there are three options add a new question add from question bank add a random question add a new question add from question bank Add a random question, but I would I would suggest that I'm going to take us through this this one on one. Let's start with that, so that the quiz that they are giving students will be like 10, 10, 10, or 20, 20. They can do it randomly, one by one. All right. Then maybe the part two of this training I can now do bulk upload. Okay. So a new question. That's option one from question bank. That is the other other leg of the training that I'm talking about. A random question also is going to be part of the other leg of the training. So for but for this quiz now we're going to use this option, a new question. So when you click a new question, it will give you this array of questions. You can set true or false questions. You can set matching questions. There can be short answer questions, numerical, essay, calculated multi choice, calculated simple, drag and drop text into text, drag and drop markers, drag and drop into image, embedded answers also, random short answer matching. You can see the array of questions that you can deploy. So on your own, if you click on multiple choice question, it's going to tell you that it allows the selection of a single or multiple choice from a predefined list. You click on true or false, a simple form of multiple choice question with just two choices, true or false. We're going to look at matching. The answer to each of a number of subsection must be selected from a list of possibilities. So there are endless possibilities of questions you can do. Now let's look at the, uh, multiple choice questions so when you select these multiple choice questions click on add question name one question one question name one all right question text 
This is where you now put the question. What discipline does econometric belong to? That's the question. Then default mark is one. General feedback. Just leave that. ID number, leave that. One or multiple answers. So in this question, this multiple choice question, do you want one answer only? Or you want a situation whereby you have to choose two correct answers? So if you want two correct answers, or three correct answers, you say multiple answers only. All right, but one answer only. Let's just say one answer only. Is it A? Is it B or C or D? Number choices, we have A, B, C. Choice one. So what is our option one? That is choice one. Um, Arabic. What discipline? Is it Arabic? So of course, Arabic is wrong. Econometrics belong to economics. But Arabic, so if it's wrong, leave it as none. So if any, anyone chooses Arabic, the grade is none, zero. Choice two, that is option B, econometrics. Economics, what discipline? So economics is right. So the grade here will not be none because it's this is the right answer. So we have to change this to 100%. Now, choice three is option C. So what discipline? Yoruba. Yoruba. So that is wrong. So we leave that as none. Then you go down to option four. That is D. That is D. Option D. So Awusa. That's another option. Is wrong. So we leave that as none. So we have already said this. We have provided first option, option A, B, C, and D. But and we have told the learning management system that this is the right answer, economics. So anybody that chooses this gets one, hundred percent. Every other person chooses that chooses the other options is zero. That's why we left as none. All right. So just scroll down and say save changes. Can we see this now? This is the first question that we have put. What discipline does econometrics belong to? Now we want to add another question. Add a new question. All right. True or false question. So we just pick true or false question. I will now say add again. You can add more like 10 multiple choice questions, 10 true or false, or 20, it depends on what you want. So the second option is now to add true or false questions and click on add. This is a statement. Econometrics belong to economics discipline. It's a statement. Is it true or false? So of course, default mark is one. So look at, this is the only option that's been given because we are considering a type of question that answers true or false so we don't have that multiple choice you know like setting three options or four options so econometrics belong to economics discipline that is true all right so you have to supply the right answer correct answer just select true so if some people put, put false that means it will be wrong and that's all we need to do there and then just go down and say save changes I've been able to add two questions now, multiple choice question and two or false question. So, so if this is the number of questions I want to add, there are just two questions. I have to go to this um, text box and change this number from 10 to two, because this is, this is one mark, this is one mark. So I have to change to two and save. So if you have deployed 30 questions, you have to change this to 30. So this will have to be equal to this, all right? Okay, so you can see here, quiz on econometrics. So when you click on it, this is what this is what it's gonna show you, quiz on econometrics, and then you have preview quiz now. When you click on preview quiz now, you can see that these are the two questions I have just put, one and two. So if you have like 30, you're gonna have 30 here. Then once the study is done, you just click finish attempt. So the first question, Econometrics belongs to the economics principle. You can see it's a true or false answer. True. So you should choose what you want and say next page. Question two. What discipline does econometrics belong to? Select one because we chose one answer. If you say select multiple, it will, say, it will tell us to select multiple. So Arabic, economics, Yoruba, Ausa. So it's economics, so you choose the right answer. And you click finish because there are just two. So if there are 30, by the time you are done with the 30, you will see finish attempt. Go back to the course page and you will go to the admission block. Admission block. This admission block. Now, what we normally do, there are two things that, that are important here that I need to show. 
that is report and grade book before the management for the center will pay facilitator or e tutor they need to tell them to generate the report of the activity online so the, the e tutor or the facilitator will have to go online to generate report and it is based on this that payment is made so little will go to this report you can see you have logs live logs activity report so the editor or the facilitator will go to activity report click on activity report can you see so this is everything that it has done so everybody can see director can see the officer in charge of scoring the what the editor has done or the facilitator has done can i say oh wow in study session one okay you put announcement you put cost module yes you give them self assignment questions in session two you did this you did that so we can see one person out of one viewed it three views three people have three learners have viewed it six six learners have viewed this so they can actually you know there's multiple choice question that is deployed here oh, wow training class there's short notes yes so they can score so throughout the year this is what this tutor has done by going to report and activity report and so the e tutor can now click file and print click file and print this activity report and submit to the center whereby they will now assess what he has done and then pay based on the activity that he has deployed online so that is this is one of the measure it can print activity report if I can print activity report then the other measure is how will the e to get the result of what he has deployed he has deployed discussion forum he has deployed tutor marked assessment he has deployed computer marked assessment tutor marked assignment and he wants to now submit this course because everything that has been done here would come under continuous assessment. So what the editor would do is, of course, go back to the course page, go back to the course page, and then go to grade book setup. It goes to the grade book setup. All right. So when it gets to grade book setup, you can see export, export. So he clicks on export, but he wants to export the grade. Once you click export. That export will take him to another interface. You can see when once you click export, you can see Excel spreadsheet. Excel spreadsheet. So you will click on Excel spreadsheet. But before he clicks on it, you can see all this activity. Um, tutor marked assignment, cost total. So these are activities that have been deployed. So you just uncheck this, uncheck the cost total because you may still have to do one or two things. And then click Excel spreadsheet. So once you click on Excel spreadsheet, okay. So you will click on download and it will download as a dot CSV. It will, it will download as a dot CSV. All right, so I'm gonna show us how it will be as a dot Z, how we're gonna see it as a dot CSV. So it has been downloaded. So we can see this now, one to one, and these are what we have deployed. We have deployed, um, two resources file we have deployed a video to actually um, expose the students to more information on econometrics we have also deployed three activities tutor marked assignment discussion forum on econometrics and also multiple choice questions on econometrics three major activities and two resources so with this we are good to go so thank you for listening